Digicams. It is the family camera that your parents use when you go on a family vacation. And after using, it's just gonna get tucked away, never to see the light of day ever again. They were definitely the odd ones out out of all the digital cameras out there. But in an article by Johnny Yokoyama in Japan, Digicams are the new film. He stated in his article stating points based on his experience on why that's not the case. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you my reasons why your Digicam is better than your disposable film cameras. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Patrick. I am an architecture gadget. I make videos on architecture, quirky tech, and unnecessary knowledge. So if you're into that, make sure to subscribe for more content like this. <laughs> for this video to be organized, let's put it into three parts. Number one, what I use my Digicam for because I use it for a very uh, specific purpose. Comparing the Digicam to a disposable film camera, I'm just gonna give you uh, pros and cons based on my experience. And lastly, should you stop using disposable film cameras and just go for the Digicam route? So let's start with the Digicam. The small and compact cameras that we use when we are part of an event in school or part of the peak judge days, when we take photos. <laughs> Sa mga ka-age ko dyan, I feel like our photography journey started with the Digicam. Because I remember nung bata ko, we had a Digicam sa bahay. And surprisingly, meron nga din siyang games and music player. Multi-purpose. We love it. <laughs> and my photography journey went from that camera to the Sony DCR SX60 Handycam, and then to the Canon 1100D, to the Canon M50, which I'm filming right now, and to film cameras. I have a lot in my collection, so I'm not gonna put it here. But if you want to see my camera collection, hit the like button. Alright, let's start with what I use my Digicam for. To give you a short description about myself, I am an introvert. When given the chance, I just shy away to the corner and spend my time alone. With that being said, when I'm out and about, I just love observing people. I'm, I'm such a people, people watcher. I, I just love observing people like what type of denim is that person wearing? What type of coffee is that person sipping? I just like observing them go by with their day-to-day -day lives. And that ultimately made me want to take photos of people, uh, but not in a model type way. Uh. I just like taking photos of people being a subject and adding a little bit of story to each photo I take. For example, when it comes to concerts or events where there's no uh, actual target model, I'd take photos of the crowd, like this photo for example. I took this photo from the Orgullo Bicolenikita Kikorahota event here in Bicol. I was walking around the event um, with gout as well. Gout, yeah. <laughs> I was getting tired na and we were about to leave. Uh, I saw this at the corner of my eye so I immediately snapped it. I'm very happy with the end result. It may be a bit blurry but the photo is very telling. So with that in mind, when it comes to me and my friends, uh, I would just take photos of them without the story behind every photo. <laughs> so this is the Sony DSE W800. I bought this camera mid-pandemic because my old one was missing and I found a TikTok where she was using her Digicam to take photos of her friends. By the way, follow the great Digicam on Instagram guys, I upload photos of my friends there. So if you wanna know who I'm friends with, follow me there. <laughs> I use my Digicam to take random snippets uh, during an event or when something's happening with my friends. For example, this photo was taken at my friend's house. Uh, as you can see in the back, my friend was vomiting and... <laughs> <laughs> and my friend in front was like, hey. So now you know what I use my Digicam for. Now let's compare a Digicam to disposable film cameras. I went and thought of five, but I'm just gonna go for three because uh, it kind of fits the others. So I'm just gonna cut this video short for you. <laughs> based on my experience, by the way, based on my experience. Let's start with photos. There's a massive difference between Digicam and film photos. On film, sometimes it would end up with a greenish tint or an orange tint. Uh, this is due to the fact that your rolls of film wasn't stored properly because your rolls of film should be stored in a cool, stable environment. You can see the individual grain on your photos. It has the perfectly imperfect uh, vibe that we all know and love. You can definitely feel the vintage vibe that uh, film photos emits. Whereas in Digicams, your photos are very raw. It also depends on what settings you went for on that specific shoot. Photos are very sharp, especially when you're using a flash 
but sometimes the flash would be too powerful, leaving you with a very bright face in this photo, for example. Second, retrievability. Whoa, retrievability. Alam naman natin when it comes to film, uh, in order for you to get your film photos, you would have to send your rolls of film to a film lab. This is if you don't want to try developing and scanning your rolls of film by yourself. Mind you that you would need a lot of equipment if you want to try developing and scanning uh, by yourself. For example, like the developing tank, C41 kit, uh, the light pad, but I'm just going to talk about it on the, on the next bullet later for you to get your films digitized you would have to wait at least three to five days it really depends on your film labs so make sure to contact them before sending your roles to them whereas in the digicam on the other hand after your shoot you would just have to like pop out your sd card and put it into your computer and then send it to lightroom and then you're done so yeah film three to five days at least if you're not gonna do it by yourself digicam instantly after your shoot and the third one is cost. It's no secret that film photography is very expensive. Like the camera, the rolls of film, the developer, and the software. For the camera, you can actually borrow from a friend. But if you're lucky, and if you are looking for a film camera, you just have to go to a Japanese surplus. Because like, they would often leave a film camera at the very, very back of the store. I was very lucky to see this at the back of the store here in Bicol. This is the Fuji Zoom Cardia 700 date. I bought this for 700 pesos then, and it still works pretty fine. Rolls of film. For rolls of film, it will cost you around 600 per roll. But if you are if you want to try, for example, like a Porsche 400, that's like the premium roll. That's gonna cost you around like 1,500 on Shopee as well. <laughs> For the developers, you would need a C41 kit. Uh, I saw one at Shopee. It's already pre-mixed for, I think, 3,000. But I bought mine last year, early 2021, for around 2,000 pesos. It's pre-mixed na. And I instantly thought it's very expensive. So I should, I should keep on using this until it expires. So at the moment, no one's selling uh, color film developers uh, Shopee or Zana, sadly. But like, let's just wait. Hopefully, my dad thing. I don't get it. Also, you would need a developing tank. I have right here is the uh, Patterson developing tank. I bought this for 3,000 pesos. I was the first one to buy it. I was very scared because I thought it was fake. But surprisingly, it's actually real. So, thanks, seller. Alright, let's say may C41 kit ka na, meron ka na rin on developing tank. So like you're agitating your film in like 3 minutes, 5 se minutes, 7 minutes. And then bam, you're washing your film and inanspool mo na siya sa developing spool. Next, you would need is a light pad. This is the fastest way to scan your, your film is with a light pad and your camera. Let's say na giant na yung film mo, let's now take photos of your negatives. I suggest you look for the brightest one because it's gonna end up with the best results. Alright, lastly, we go to software. <laughs> You've successfully developed your film, na picture mo na yung negatives mo, you're ready na to put it into Lightroom. Next, you need a software. So for me, I use Negative Lab Pro because uh, it's easier for me and it's a plug-in in, in uh, Lightroom, so no added programs to my computer. So last time I checked, Negative Lab Pro is 5,000. That's like the premium version. So yeah, it's very expensive. <laughs> so in total, ang nagasas ko in developing and scanning my, my own film is this. Hindi ko, hindi ko pa na add so like, eto. <laughs> Whereas in the Digicam, you just have to look for your old one or look or borrow from a family friend. But if you want, you can just buy a new one, pick an SD card, and shoot away. I, I, I bought my Digicam for this amount. I forgot. I'm sorry. It's tired. I'm late. Sorry. Just a tip. Just send your film rolls to a lab. It's cheaper. Trust me. All right, lastly, should you stop using disposable film cameras and just go for the compact uh, digicam in my in my opinion in my opinion respect my opinion in my opinion in my opinion if you're just gonna take photos of your friends or yourself like you're, you're fit for that day or you're you're, you're, good, you're gonna go uh clubbing or you're gonna get dinner with your friends i'd say go for the compact digicams it's gonna save you money in the long run trust me but if you have budget naman why not diba it's, ma it's your money not mine you do you you spend your money honey I am warning you though, it is a rabbit hole. But if you're going out of the country for a like a vacation, 
like a very bihira event in your life, I'd say go for uh, go for disposable film cameras. It adds an additional layer of importance to your photos. So in that case, I'd say go for disposable film cameras. So in total, it depends on the situation. So, oh, pop, 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 stop. <laughs> By the way, I'm not discouraging anybody to try film photography out. I'm happy that I started my film photography journey uh, back in the late 2020s because uh, it gave me an idea of how much how much I should be more careful when taking photos, how meticulous should I be when taking photos, how to properly frame and remember your exposures. I'm just here telling you my experience on film and digital photography. Also, if you want to try developing and scanning your film by yourself, I'd say go for it because it's an experience I'd like to relive again, even though it's expensive. <laughs> Because seeing your negatives out of that developing spool and scanning it is very satisfying to experience. So overall, I've shared my thoughts on this heavy debate. So I want to know what do you guys think? So should you stop using disposable film cameras and just go with the uh, more compact digicam route? Or continue on using your uh, disposable film cameras? Share them in the comments below. I want to I wanna know your thoughts about it. Alright guys, that's it for me. Thank everybody for watching. Uh, more content like this, hopefully. Hopefully. So if you're into architecture, quirky tech, and unnecessary knowledge, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>